dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Starring George Dolenz in Journey to Bethany, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the outstanding personalities of stage and screen join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is George Dolenz, who makes his radio debut before our microphone. The title of our dramatic story is Journey to Bethany. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer with an important message. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, the right job for you. Two, continuous training in your job. Three, four, lifetime security. Five, travel and recreation. Yes, men, choose the career that offers all five. Find out about the five keys to a successful future at your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Journey to Bethany, starring George DeLentz as Aram Gain. <laughs> The village of Bethany sparkled with excitement in the morning sun like a white diamond. The main highway was packed with babbling humanity en route to Jerusalem and the Passover. Roman rubbed elbow with Greek and Greek with Arab, and all were either astride or competing with camel, horse, donkey, or bullock for a place on the road. It was a pageant of color, and the air was filled with happy travelers but only despair filled the heart of a newcomer to Bethany. Off on a quiet street, very much to himself, he closed the door of his room to the court where he'd received lodging and began to write a letter on scroll and parchment. My dear Mary Magdalena, I am here in Bethany, and I am waiting the return of this man Jesus you speak of. I must confess I am at my wit's end. The trip from Damascus was long and taxing. I've had time to think of the beginning of this, of what happened in the dark yesterday. A visitor came to me in Alexandria while I was posing for the sculpture for a bronze plaque of my likeness. May we interrupt the artist a moment, Aram? You have a visitor. Who, Joseph? The merchant from Denbera, by name Shad. Ah, oh, that tiny ant. I remember well when you were grateful to trade with Shad. But he's nothing. He has traveled a long distance. Mm, so he has. Uh, all right. Tell the artist they may have ten minutes. Yes, Aram. Shad, you may come in now. Thank you. Well, Aram, it is kind of you to see me. How are you, Shad? Be seated, won't you? I thank you. Well, how is the merchant prince of all Alexandria? <laughs> you honor me. I merely speak the truth. Certainly a man is famous when he sits to have his likeness etched upon metal plaques and his portrait painted at the same time. A small honor the queen bestowed. Ah, uh, but they will be purchased at a price. Oh, I suppose so. What do you think of the likeness? Oh, excellent likeness, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, that chin is unmistakable. Only... Only what? Why, it isn't the likeness. It is you, Aram. You have changed. Mm, am I uh, older to you? No, not that. Oh, it is unimportant. Men do change. They do. I only arrived yesterday, Aram. How does Alexandria look to you? Uh, it has not changed since my dear wife and I spent a fortnight here when we were first married. Mm, I suppose you'll be glad to get home. Ah, yes. I am homesick for my family. You miss your wife? My wife is dead. Mm. Forgive me. 
Oh, now, you had no way of knowing. Yes, she left me nearly three years ago. But I still have her in my family. I see her every day in them. Uh, but, uh, Aram, I, I come to you for counsel. Whatever you wish. Aram, tell me, what of the cashmere wool? Cashmere? Yes, uh, what of the market? The rumor along the Emporium is that no caravans will be coming through this year because of the strife in the East. Ah, uh, yes. I've heard that rumor. But uh, do you give it credence? Were I to buy cashmere now, Aram, uh, would I be safe? Uh, the prices are so high. You will be safe, Shad. You are wise to buy now. I can tell you that with confidence. And you have my permission to give similar advice to your merchant's acquaintances of Denbara. Uh, again, I, I thank you. You are a generous man. But more than that, a friend. Well, uh, I go now, Aram. Good day, and the Lord bless you. <clears throat> yes, Joseph? I couldn't help hearing you, Aram, the advice that you gave to Shad of Dembera. Uh, I want to speak to you about that. What a stroke of fortune, having the men call upon me. You consider it a stroke of fortune? Indeed I do. The little fish will draw in the big fish. But I don't see how you can do that to Shad. But, Joseph, the cashmere is very important to me. There is a fortune in it. But that man respects you. He is your friend. How can you lie to him? How can you tell him there will be no caravans this year, when now, this very moment en route to Alexandria, you yourself have underwritten the greatest caravan from the East ever to enter the city? It is merely business, Joseph. Sometimes I do not understand you. Come here to the window, Joseph. Yes. Look at that street down there. I became acquainted with that street when I was very young. I tended mules. I was cursed, spat at. I worked a whole year to save enough to buy my mother one ounce of spirit of jasmine, the perfume she loved. I'll tell you this, or you'll know why I don't mind making a cuppa. All right, Aaron. And now I want you to do this. Sell cashmere. Sell, sell, sell. Until I don't possess one shred of wool. Do you hear me? Yes, Aram. And don't feel sorry for Shad. He can mind for himself. Look, Joseph. Do you see what I see? It is your caravan. Thank the Lord it has arrived. And now, you have just come from the Emporium. What is it happening? What could happen? The bottom has fallen off. Cashmere has dropped nearly two-thirds. Two-thirds? That's more than I expected. Yes, Adam. You have made your killing. Twice over you have. What do you mean, uh, twice over? Your trusting friend, Shad. He just fell dead on the floor of the Emporium. What are you doing, Joseph? I'm getting things together, Aaron. I'm leaving your employ. Come, come now, Joseph. Is it because of this shared business? I do not care to discuss it, Aaron, other than to say that you no longer have a friend in Alexandria. <laughs> oh, Joseph, Shad was an old man. An old man, don't you understand? Get out of my way. But, Joseph, I, I can make restitution. Yes, Aaron. But what can you do for a dead man? It was the beginning of the end. I began to change. The work I had once loved, I now hate. I sold out and traveled. I was a rich man. I wanted to enjoy life. I was determined not to despair of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so clever, Aaron. Well, thank you, my dear. And so attractive. Oh. You think so? When you're not brooding. Oh, that is not me any longer. You know that. I was determined to get you out of your despondency. You have accomplished miracles, my dear one. Ah, ah, you're sweet. 
You know, I can't believe it. You can't believe what? Well, the stories that I've heard of you and your business. Oh, please, not that. That is long past. But really, I can't believe it, what they say. What? What do they say? Oh, that you're so clever and ruthless. You even drove men to their death. You will excuse oh. me, please. Aram, what did I say? Come back, Aram. You will remember, Mary, that was what brought me out on the streets of Damascus, where I met you that morning, a man without a soul. Thank God for meeting you, Mary Magdalena, and for what you have told me about this prophet, this man called Jesus. A week has passed. This afternoon, I had my first tender thought in a long time. There is a garden outside my hotel. Walking through the garden today, I passed a lovely young lady sitting in the sunlight. I had to stop. I beg your pardon. Oh, yes? That perfume you're wearing, is that not spirit of jasmine? Why, yes, it is. You'll forgive me. It is rather a rare scent. Oh, yes, it is rare. I thought I'd recognize it. You see... It was my mother's favorite perfume. Well, how nice. Do you mind if I sit down? Indeed not. You're a new arrival of Bethany, aren't you? That's right. And you are wait for the master? Oh, yes. And you? I do. Are all those things true that they say? The miracles? I dare say they are. And I suppose if one has faith... Yes. If one only has faith, Oh, she was so lovely, Mary. And each afternoon she would come out into the garden for an hour of sunshine. I find myself beginning to live for that hour each day. And I almost suspected that she was too. Well, aren't you going to say hello? Oh, oh it's you. I've been standing here completely unnoticed. I'm sorry. You'll forgive me. If you will dine with me tonight. I'm afraid I can't. Well, I'll keep trying. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. You seem very cheerful. When I sit with you, I must confess I'm most cheerful. <laughs> that song. Yes? It's like the perfume was to you. It's very dear to me. Oh, why? Well, my father, on a trip to Alexandria, came home singing it. Oh, well, your father's with you now? No, no, he passed away some time ago. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I've been talking to you these past days. We have come to be close friends, and here I don't even know your name. <laughs> I'm Naira, the daughter of Shad of Denbera. The daughter of Shad, you say? Yes. And you? My name is uh, John. John of Bethany, I suppose one could say now. I'm glad to know you, John. I hope you will always say that. We pause briefly from our story, The Journey to Bethany, starring George Delent, to bring you an important message from our government. Army doctors work side by side with top specialists in military and civilian medicine. Army doctors find opportunities for advanced professional training. Army doctors may request overseas duty and acquire breadth of professional vision by study and observation in foreign countries. Army doctors receive good pay, allowances, and retirement benefits. The Army Medical Department now has assignments for a limited number of young doctors. Get details by writing the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now the curtain rises on Act Two of The Journey to Bethany, starring George DeLenz as Aram Gain. The sick, the needy, the broken in heart and soul continue to gather in Bethany, awaiting the arrival of Jesus of Nazareth. And in Bethany, 
following his dramatic discovery that the beautiful girl he had met and fallen in love with is the daughter of Shad of Danbira, Aaron Gain continues writing his letter to Mary Magdalene. You don't blame me, do you, Mary, for introducing myself as John of Bethany? She's so fine, so lovely. And I knew if she found out, she would hate me. So I changed my place of dwelling and used my new name. One afternoon, I went over to the garden where Naira and I usually met. Naira wasn't there, but Ruth, her companion, was. Well, hello. Ruth, and how are you today? I'm fine. Where is Naira? She wasn't feeling too well. She's staying in her room. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I think if Naira would get more exercise, if she would walk with me, perhaps... She's trying to save her strength for the walk to the prophet. Of course. Oh, poor dear. She's had her share. I uh, sensed that. She lost her father very unexpectedly. Yes? He was a small merchant. He'd gone to Alexandria, plunged heavily for him in the cashmere market on the advice of a reputed friend whom they used to call the Merchant Prince of Alexandria, a despicable man by the name of Aram Gain. Yes, yes. Yes, the bottom dropped out of the cashmere market as ruthlessly planned by this man, Aram. Many were ruined, but it killed Naira's father. A tragedy. Those who were there say it was the shock of the duplicity of his friend that killed Shad of Denbara. I really don't care to hear more. Oh, but I thought you should want to know because of your friendship with Naira. I thought you should want to know that when they bore his body home, she fainted at the roadside, striking her head upon the rock, all despaired of as she was never very strong. She's been an invalid since. God wish it had never happened to her. Oh, Mary, to know that I had hurt Naira that I had made her suffer. And now I think Ruth knows my real identity. Would she tell Naira? I stayed away from the garden one long, agonizing day, even though I could see Naira there. But the next day, I had to go to her. Hello, Naira. Oh, well, John, it's you. Yes, Naira. Where have you been? I missed you yesterday. Oh, Naira, say that again. I missed you. That's so nice to hear. Tell me, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm much better. Feeling stronger? Oh, yes, much. Strong enough for a stroll with me? Well, uh, no, no, John, not yet. One of these days, perhaps, huh? <laughs> My, those flowers are lovely. Her flowers have beautiful colors, don't they? These match your dress so well. Oh? Say, but what are they doing in the garden? All these statues and the decorations? <laughs> Ruth says the owner of the inn brought them out yesterday. They are nice, aren't they? Indeed. Oh, but tell me, are there still many gathering to await the master? Yes, the multitudes gather. And where will the prophet be? They say in a small olive grove on the edge of town. Oh. You and I shall walk up there together. Well, no, I, I don't think so. And why not? Well, it's a long trip. I'm not sure I shall even attempt it. Oh, but I have a strong arm. Maybe days, even weeks, before I have strength to attempt the walk. I may have to wait a future visit of the master. Then I will wait too, Naira. Oh, no, please. But I would. Don't you know? I would wait patiently, not for merely days, or no weeks, or months, or years, but generations. Oh, John. I love you, Naira. John, please. I can't tell you how much. John, I... You must know. When I'm near you, I feel your gentle grace. Oh, John. I love you, Naira. Please do not ever forget that. Ah, Mary, I tell you, you have no idea how grateful I was that my fears about Ruth were unfounded. And I was grateful for Naira. Naira loved me. As John of Bethany, she loved me. I was sure of it. Now I kneeled down to voice my gratitude in prayers. As you had told me, it was the next morning that I was up and dressed when... May I come in, sir? Come in. I have your water, sir. Well, of course. You're always so punctual. It is the custom of the house. The urn is on the table. Uh, yes, thank you. 
I have heard, sir, that Jesus of Nazareth has arrived in Bethany. Is he here, then? With John and Simon Peter and Judas Iscariot. Mm, the people in Bethany will be grateful. Yes, and we will hear of miracles now. Of miracles. Oh, by the way. Yes? Strangest thing. I meant to mention this to you yesterday. They've been decorating the garden, you know. That I know. Well, sir, there is a bronze plaque newly placed there, which is the absolute likeness of you. Only the name underneath it is not yours. It is Aram's game. I rushed to the window. I could see the plaque from where I was, but worse, Naira had entered the garden. Surely she would see it. All morning long, I paced back and forth in my room. What to do? That afternoon, I looked out in the yard. Naira was still there. Finally, I had to go to her. As I approached, I sensed that something was wrong. And then I could see she was sitting directly in front of the plaque, directly in front of it. Well? Why, oh, John. What do you think now? What do I think of what? The bronze plaque before you. Oh, I, uh, I hadn't noticed. Are you being kind? Well, no. What I... is the name of the bottom of it? But I... Look at the face. Who is that man? I, I can't tell you. Then what is the name at the bottom of the plaque? Oh, but John... Well, read it. I can't read it. You, you can't read it. I should have told you long ago. What? That I'm going blind. That I cannot see. Oh, Naira. I didn't want you to know. I was afraid of what you might think. Naira. That's why I wouldn't go walking with you. That's why I even delayed going to the grove. Because I wanted those few moments with you each day. My darling. I was afraid of what you might do. And after what you said yesterday, that you loved me. Oh, my dearest darling. And so I close my narrative to you, Mary Magdalena, in appreciation for your advice, counsel, and friendship. You will be interested to know that Ruth knew who I was from the beginning, but for some reason kept her silence. Yes, Mary, Aram Gain is dead for good, and Naira will have her eyes. At worst, she will see through my eyes. At best. And so our journey to Bethany is already a success, and we have yet to see the master. We are leaving to walk there now. Again, in gratitude, your humble servant. Ready, Naira? Yes, John. My arm? <laughs> Thank you. It is a very strong arm, you know. Yes, I know it is. John, what will we find there in the nearness of the master? My darling, a friend of mine, Mary Magdalena, once said this to me. Unto God, all things are possible. The curtain falls in the final act of The Journey to Bethany. Our star, George DeLenz, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, the right job for you. Scientific aptitude tests determine the right job for you. Two, continuous training in your job. Specialized training and educational courses prepare you for advancement in your field. Three, planned advancement. Under the Army's advancement plan, your skill and efficiency will assure periodic promotions. Four, lifetime security. You as an Army man are guaranteed regular pay and liberal retirement benefits. In sickness, your medical care is provided without cost and your regular pay continues. Five, travel and recreation. In the Army, you will enjoy the finest recreational facilities and opportunities for worldwide travel. And remember, you have 30 days vacation with pay each year. Yes, choose the career that offers all five. Get full details at your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our star and our producer. George, I want to welcome you to our theater on your first appearance with us. Thank you, C.P. And confidentially, this is my first appearance in radio, too. Well, good. 
I'm sure our audience would like to hear something about your life and your new picture at RKO. Well, about my life, I was born in Gorizia. Our house was half in Italy and uh, half in Yugoslavia. What did that make you? Well, our kitchen was in Italy. <laughs> and since you spent most of your time in the kitchen, that made you an Italian, <laughs> eh? <laughs> That's right. Until I became an American citizen. Say, I've been hearing some great things about this new picture you made for Howard Hughes at RKO. It is called Vendetta. You know. <laughs> That's the story about the Corsican blood feud, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. It took place right after the Napoleonic War. And uh, who co-stars with you? Faith Dumerg. She plays the part of my sister. This is her first picture, isn't it? Yes, and she is excellent. I will certainly be on the lookout for it. When will it be released? Oh, in about two months. You know... I'd like to go back into your exciting life, George, but our play has been long and we haven't the time. I'd like to tell about your experiences in the Italian army prior to the last war and how you got into motion pictures, but we'll have to save all that until later. So right now I'll say thank you again for being with us before they ring down the curtain. It was my pleasure, C.P. Now tell me, who's playing next week? Next week, George, and ladies and gentlemen, the highly capable young actress, Nancy Guild joins us in a bright story titled The People Next Door. I know you'll enjoy it. I'll be listening. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, George. <laughs> and thanks again for joining us. Be sure to listen next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Nancy Guile stars in a comedy, The People Next Door. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. George Dolan has appeared for the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script was by Rich Hall, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>